Hello everyone, this is Mr. Mahmood here, helping you do better in maths by giving you tips and tricks on how to revise and going through maths revision on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to press that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload my next video. Today's lesson is on upper and lower bounds. So at the end of this lesson, we should be able to work out the upper and lower bounds of numbers to nearest tens and hundreds or even thousands. Secondly, work out the upper and lower bounds for a number rounded to the nearest decimal place. And finally, do calculations with upper and lower bounds. And we'll look at some worded questions as well. So before I start, a quick question for you. If I said I had five pounds to the nearest pound in coins, what is the most money I could have and this still be true? So let me know in the comments and also what about the least amount of money I could have? So the most money and the least money I could possibly have. Let me know in the comments. So let's get on with the first example. Work out the upper and lower bounds of 310 to the nearest 10. Now before we start, we need to know the range of answers that we could possibly have. Okay, so because we are rounding it to the nearest 10 over here, so the nearest 10, we can divide 10 by 2. So basically I'm halving the 10 which gives me five. To find the upper bound, I will just need to add five to the answer. 310 add five, which is 315. And to find the lower bound, just need to take away five from 310, which gives us 305. So my upper bound is 315 and the lower bound is 305. You can also write this as an inequality. Say for example, x was the number. And when you write the range of answers, we need to write it in this way. So the x on the right hand side, we need to write a less than, and on the left hand side, greater or equal to. Okay, so the number that we can, x can be less than is going to be 315 but it cannot be equal to 315. It has to be less than 215. So the X can be 314, 213, 312, and so on. But X can be greater than 305 or equal to 305. Because if you round 305 to the nearest 10, you can really have 310. Whereas if you round 315, to the nearest 10, it will be 320. So the value can only be less than 315. So it can be 314. So if you need to have a look at the inequality lessons again, please do check it out. I'll put the link on the description. Let's have a look at an example where we have to round it to the nearest 100. So we have 3,200. So the nearest 100, we said you round it to nearest 100. We have to divide 100 by 2. That gives us 50. So for the upper bound, we are going to add 50 to the number that we've been given. So 300,200 add 50. That gives us an answer of 3,250. For the lower bound, we always take away. So 3,200 take away 50. That gives us 3,150. 50. So the upper bound is 3,250 and the lower bound is 3,150. If you write it as a range, always remember on the right hand side is always less than, the left hand side greater than or equal to. So just write down the upper bound on the right hand side, 3,250 3, and the left hand side write down the lower bound, 3,150. Next. Work out the upper and lower bound of 34.5 to the nearest one decimal place. Now we're going to round it to one decimal place. 
So to write 1 decimal place, we can write it as 0 0.1. Are we going to divide it by 2? So if I divide 0 0.1 by 2, it will give us an answer of 0 0.05. Following the rule from before, for upper bound, we are going to add 0 0.05 to the actual number that we have. So 34.5 added to 0 0.05. That gives us an answer of 34.55. For lower bound, we are going to take away 0 0.05 from the actual number that we have. So 34.5 take away 0 0.05. That gives us an answer of 34.45. So the upper bound is 34.55 and the lower bound is 34.45. So we'll write it down as a range. Upper bound on the right hand side, so 34.55 and the left hand side, the lower bound, 34.45. Now we're going to move on to some practice questions. So let's have a go at these questions. You can pause the video and have a go and write down your answers and I'll put the answers on so you can match up the answers. You can pause the video and mark the answers. So let's move on to the worded problems. So we are going to calculate with upper and lower bounds. Now before we do this, we need to look at some rules. So what is the range of possible lengths for the perimeter of this triangle? Now the rules are, so for calculating the upper bound, so let's draw a quick table here. So this table we're going to use to work out the upper bound and lower bound calculations. So this was for upper bound, so let's write down UB and this is for lower bound. For adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, for adding, you just add the upper bound and the upper bound. When you to calculate the lower bound, you add the lower bound and the lower bound. Now, for subtracting, it's going to be upper bound. To calculate the upper bound, you're going to upper bound take away the lower bound. And to work out the lower bound is going to be lower bound take away the upper bound. Okay, for multiplying it's going to be for upper bound times by upper bound. And for multiplying the uh, calculating lower bound in terms of multiplication, to multiply, when multiplying, it's going to be lower bound times by lower bound. Now when you're dividing, just be careful there. So we're going to have upper bound, to work out the upper bound calculation, upper bound divided by lower bound. So you're going to find out the biggest possible answer. And to work out the lower bound, you're going to divide lower bound by upper bound to find the lowest possible answer. So we want to calculate the perimeter of this triangle. Now the least length could be 2.5, 3.5 and 4.5. So basically we retain writing down the lower bound measurements for this triangle of the lengths. Okay, so the, these are all the lower bound. So 3.5 can be written as 2.5, 5 can be written as 4.5 and the 4 can be written as 3.5. Okay, the smallest possible perimeter will be all the low bounds added together because if you look at the rule, so we have low bound added to low bound, so these are all low bound. So the total answer is 10.5. The smallest possible perimeter or the lower bound is 10.5. The most length could be, or the upper bound could be, 3.5. So we're adding 0 0.5 to it, so 3.5, 4.5 and 5.5. 5. 
So these are all the upper bound numbers for this one. So the upper bound. So the largest possible perimeter will be all the upper bounds added together, which gives an answer of 13.5 centimeters. Let's have a look at another example. Find the upper and lower bounds for the area of this triangle. Before we start doing that, we need to find out what is the formula to work out the area of a triangle. So area of triangle is half times base times height. And we can see they're all multiplying times and times. So upper bound rule is when we have multiplying numbers, we have to multiply upper bound by upper bound. And we find the when we find the lower bound answer, or the least possible answer, is going to be lower bound times by lower bound. So six centimeters is going to be lower bound 5.5, upper bound is 6.5, and then four centimeter lower bound is 3.5, and upper bound is 4.5. Now let's put these numbers into our formula and work out the area. So the upper bound area is going to be upper bound times by upper bound. So these two times together and times by half. So half times 6.5 times 4.5 gives an answer of 14.625 centimeters square because it's area. And the lower bound area is going to be half times 3.5 times by 5.5 and gives an answer of 9.625 centimeters square. So the upper bound area is 14.625 centimeters squared and lower bound area is 9.625 centimeters squared. So whenever you get a question like this, always write down the rule to start off with, which rule you are using, and then write down the upper bound lengths and the lower bound lengths for each measurement, and then put it in your formula and work out the area. There's another question. You can pause the video and have a go at this one. Well, first of all, write down the rules. What rule are you going to use? And before you write down the rule, you might need to write down the formula that you're going to use. So pause the video and have a go at this and I'll explain the question once you've finished. Okay, I hope you have a go at this question. So find the upper and lower bounds for the speed of Zach's fastest 100 meter to the nearest meter race of 9.58 seconds to the nearest two decimal place. So first of all, we need to work out the speed. So therefore the speed formula is speed equals distance divided by time. So we got a distance of 100 meters and the time is 9.58 seconds. Okay, so we can see we are dividing. So the rule is going to be for dividing. So the rule is for upper bound and the lower bound rule. Because find the upper and lower bound, we're finding both the upper and lower bound. So upper bound rule is going to be upper bound divided by lower bound. And the lower bound rule is going to be lower bound divided by upper bound. So for the upper bound, you're trying to get the highest possible answer. And the lower bound, you're finding the lowest possible answer. These questions could be worded in this way as well. So find the highest possible speed and find the lowest possible speed. So these are exam keywords for you that you need to identify. You might not necessarily say upper bound and lower bound in your questions. So, so 100 meters, 100 meters, the lower bound is 99.5, upper bound is 100.5. 9.5 it seconds, up lower bound is 9.575. Remember it's two decimal places, so you need to divide it by two and add it on to 9.58. Take away from 9.58 for lower bound and add it to 9.58 to find the upper bound. And then find the upper bound speed. So we said divide the upper bound by the lower bound. So upper bound is 100.5, the distance and the lower bound time is 9.575. So divide those, and they give the answer of 10.5 meters per second. Now let's work out the lower bound speed, or the least possible speed, is going to be distance, which is the 99.5 
meters divided by 9.585 seconds gives an answer of 10.4 meters per second. Okay, so that was the uh, final example. Now, the next step for you would be, first of all, make notes. So I'm hoping you made notes from this lesson. Secondly, you can head over to the website that I've set up, which is called www.ytothesky.co.uk and you will find a set of exam questions there. And finally, watch the next video, which will be a link on this video for the next topic, which is going to be on accuracy and error, or error intervals. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you.